You're welcome back and it's still the key points. Many thanks to all of you who've been sending us messages via Twitter. Uh, do feel free to send us more and I'll read them out. Our next issue is about digitalizing Ghana. Real impactful transformational change or a short-term quick fix? Well, five days ago, Vice President Baumia updated uh, the country on progress to achieving a digital economy. The Vice President referenced extending digital platforms in the Ghanaian uh, government sector to allow for uh, effective purchase of goods and services and access, leveraging on the NIA's registration, as well as digital support for land, property, health, education and tax management. However, there's been some criticism of the vice president and the view is that this is not his job. It's the job of the uh, Minister for Communications and Digitalization. Is it wrong for the vice president to be high profile leading this charge? Or should he rather be accounting on the economy to the people of Ghana. And I'm still here with uh, my guest, the MP for South Dai to our far uh, left, the Honorable Roxon Dapiamakpo, and also to my immediate left, the Director of Communications for the New Patriotic Party, Yao Bwabin Asamo. And I'll start with him on that last question. Why is the Vice President doing this? Prior to election, 2017. He was well known giving lectures about the economy, telling us what the results, what the solutions will be. Five years down the line, he has become a digitalization champion. Some feel that is the job of the communications minister, not his. What are your thoughts on that? Or what are the party's thoughts <coughs> on that? Okay. Uh, if I let me first congratulate His Excellency, the Vice President. I mean, He's a brilliant man by all standards. Uh, his governance, his uh, economics, as you say, and, and in particular his execution. Uh, more often than not, as Ghanaians, we are long on speech and short on implementation. Uh, and for me, uh, what he has achieved and he shared with us was an eye opener to all of us. It was the implementation that made me set up. Even I, as Director of Communications for the party, I was yet to link all the dots in terms of the system-wide effort to underpin the economy and grow it in a more holistic manner, in tandem, in tune with the international world. So, implementation. And, and we need to accept that not everybody is participating in the economy we even have now. We need to accept that. We need to also accept that many people uh, still suffer the danger of waking up thinking about how they are going to get the next meal in terms of uh, using their hands, using their brains, using their energy, their effort to churn out something that is tradable or immediately edible for themselves. But how do you move that society to a level where more and more people can be included in the process of the bread and butter uh, matters? Uh, and I think what the Vice President is championing goes to the heart of that. This is not as if we haven't had digitization and uh, digitalization before. And uh, I understand that the two are different. Yes. Uh, digitization is a process of mobilizing and, and assembling the data. And then digitalization is operationalizing the data to achieve the ends that you seek. So in some stages, we are at digitization. In other stages, we are at digitalization. For example, the National Identity Card, Ghana Card, we are both digitizing and digitalizing. 
because some people are yet to receive the card. They are still not on the database. And many people have received the card and now we've spread it into so many service areas. So the point I'm making is that, yes, there was a time when processes were ongoing. Yes, you could restrict it to the minister and ministry. But what the vice president said was that in 2017, on inheriting the government, the realization was that we needed a system-wide reorganization of ourselves. And, and that system-wide reorganization, you have to have a best eye view of it at the highest level. It literally is an economic management issue. Literally, the way I see it. And, and you cannot divorce economic management from that need to digitalize, use the processes of digitization to, to, to drive the economy forward. And I'll read a couple of things and then continue. When I finish reading, I'll tell you where it's from. The document is here. I'll try to read. Uh, it says, support for the Ghana Revenue Authority in implementing ongoing tax office and process reforms that aim to broaden the tax base and collect our taxes efficiently and fairly from taxpayers. You've, you, uh, I hope you are listening. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure you will comment on it. Then, a second one. Improved coordination with chief executives and boards of directors in utilizing the earmarked funds, such as the District Assembly's Common Fund, the GET Fund, and the National Health Insurance Levy. And then the last one I'll read. Steps such as the introduction of biometric processes to identify all who are on the public payroll and to check fraud in respect of those payrolls have also been undertaken. I've already begun to yield results. We are therefore close to eliminating the age-old problem of ghost names that inflated public expenditure. The very, very last one I'll read. We recognize that expenditure controls that are undertaken in an ad hoc manner sometimes rather escalate the cost of projects and create financial problems for contractors who have fulfilled their obligations but find payments from the state slow in coming. This also creates problems for the financial institutions who extend credit to the contractors. We will therefore avoid these ad hoc approaches. Contractors who have done their projects will be duly paid without further delay. I have instructed the Minister of Finance to provide cabinet with a detailed presentation of any areas owed to contractors this month, etc. These are all except from 2012. Critical policy actions of John Dramani Mahama administration when he took over after the unfortunate demise of the late President Mills. These are lacuna gaps that stayed with his administration over the four-year period. Because how best can you uh, 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 implement and broaden the tax base? We have done it from 4%. In 2012, your mama, President then President Jomama was talking about broadening the tax base. As of 2017, it was still at 4% of the population. By instituting the Ghana card and turning that identity card into a TIN number, we have expanded it straight from 4% to 86% potential. That's how you do it. Digitization and digitalization. Births and deaths. How many times haven't we mourned and struggled when you come up against a situation where you need a birth certificate and you have to go to the birth and deaths. You don't remember exactly when you are supposed to have been born on what date. We, the questions they ask you, you will be pressed to answer. And somehow or other, they find you a birth certificate. And there's so much confusion about it. Now, having digitalized our records, we are in a position to merge several institutions concerned with human beings at birth the health service, immigration, and all those institutions, and say that at birth, within a month of being born, we are going to be able to identify you once you are born in Ghana. And at the right age, you get your Ghana card, which will 
live with you for the rest of your life and help you to transact access to your driver's license on it, access to your national health insurance card on it, your TIN number, your tax paying, uh, your benefits as it, your uh, civil service, uh, uh, what do you call it? A payroll. Everything. You see, you are a complete person and the person, the government dealing with you can also be comfortable that at the press of a button they can identify, they can identify you, you and, and know you. So, I am saying that all I'm trying to say is that what is happening now, it's not bad. No one says it's bad. <laughs> and that, and that, no one says it's and bad. That, and that, at the, it, is, it requires political vision and support at the highest level. It cannot be a sectoral thing only. It is required at the highest level because it cuts across everything we are doing. It cuts across everything we are doing. If we increase revenue, we will reduce borrowing. It will put less pressure on the city. So depreciation of the city where everybody is chasing this, all those things will begin to fall in line. If we identify people well, banks will reduce their risk profiles and you, you can be sure of getting lower interest rates on borrowing and all that. So what has happened, different from the past, is that now you have a systemic overview and approach addressing all these concerns at the same time. I dare say what we are uncomfortable with is the change management. Is the change management. I read from 2012 because people are saying that, oh, but it's about bread and butter. It, since 2012, we have you solved the bread and butter. But the Mahama mm. administration mm. has laid a foundation. I am and, not doubting that. Yes. So, I, so it is the foundation that has so, now provided Jiva, the ability Jiva, of all these things to be done. The, the four government, the role, even the Rollins government, yes, had True. automated uh, courts and all that. You understand? I am saying that now you have a system-wide overview and it didn't drop from the sky. Yes, it, it is based on a foundation, but now it's a collected foundation. It is one that is bringing everything together so that it is more defined, it is more focused, and it can yield impact across board. No, but I don't think this thing has been about who did the most. I don't think it has been about MPP and DC. Certainly not. But, uh -huh. but so, so uh, okay. So I think I'd rather let you can make your final point now. Let's honourable yeah, Dapian so, come so, in and so then I'll, me, I'll put in so for what me, I wanted to put in. The critical point we are at is change management. Three issues. We maintain the status quo. In other words, it's difficult for us to begin to migrate to these systems, and so we sit where we are. That's possible. The world is moving on. Now, internationally, uh, AI. Very soon, you may go to an airport. <laughs> well, let me, this one is funny. <laughs> I, was, I was at an international airport in the shop. I just wanted a bottle of water small. and some gum because I had this long layover. I wanted to chew something. And there was no... Uh, uh, cashier, no, yes, no nothing. Meanwhile, you had cash on you. I, 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 and now I had to deal with this machine, yes. which was supposed to. <laughs> so <laughs> you, put your, with you. you put your money through the machine to give you your I change. I struggled. To put it simply, I struggled. Mm -hmm. And this is a society that is moving on. You understand? By this time, self-service checkout, yes. uh, self-service, e-passport, uh, e-check-in, uh, and all those things. So, so there are systems that are running already. So it is important that we realize that we can't be in our status quo. We have to move. The second thing is that people are talking about, in terms of change management, intermediate technologies. Yes, you, you do one before the other. But the third situation of going E the way we are is not mutually exclusive of everything else that we can do. It will actually make whatever we are trying to do at our own pace faster. So, so perhaps the challenge is to bring a lot of our people on board. Because yes, somebody uh, 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 is in Makola. He comes from fortunate enough in the beginning to access his to a minimum level. He finds it difficult typing things. 
but that person has a mobile phone and receives calls regularly. So the challenge is to put in mechanisms that will bring that person along onto the levels that is required. Because if you want us to use a QR code and buy watching, then the watch seller must be able to appreciate the QR code. You understand? <laughs> so, so the challenge is change management, bringing people along. And that would mean that would mean that we need to penetrate heavily with the infrastructure. The Vice President noted that we were at 26% uh, penetration, internet penetration uh, by 2017, and now we are at 50%. I dare say, with the kind of reforms being rolled out, 50% below, okay. we need to go even faster to the point where a lot more people anywhere in the country can be able to go up online and be able to deliver their needs online. Imagine, and I'll conclude there okay. for Dafi Amekpo. No, imagine. Imagine I, that. I understand your sound is um, challenged a bit. Oh, just, really? Just hold on. We'll correct that. Uh, oh, still so I'm talking points. for nothing. It's key points on uh, TV3 and uh, we'll be bringing you more on that shortly. Just take a quick break, we'll be right back. Thanks for uh, staying with us and uh, just some quick messages and then I'll let the Honorable Boabeng Asamwa complete his um, submissions. David Adu writes, digitalizing the economy is a laudable initiative which can not only be credited to the current administration, moreover its relevance should be a reflection in the lives of ordinary Ghanaians who cannot afford the basic necessities of life. Um, Adu writes, digitalizing of the economy started in the SWAL NDC administration with massive investment in both ICT infrastructure and applications and so Dr. Baumia cannot take full credit for it. Uh, this one from Sewa says, I've come to realize one thing about our governance systems is that vis-a-vis -vis constitutional provisions, when it's an NDC member that falls on the wrong side of the law, the MPAP and its assigned seek to give different meaning to suit their agenda. I think this was for the uh, earlier uh, topic. So thank you very much uh, for your messages. We are now discussing digitalization. You can send your tweets to at Behobampo or to our TV3 underscore Ghana or 3FM 92.7. Yes, Honorable Boabe. Uh, two examples of uh, potential best practice. One local, one international, and then I'll wrap up. The local one is that you are in Accra. You want to buy tomatoes from Akumada, Kumasi. Under normal circumstances that happens, you get into a car and get there. You are carrying cash. Everything is on you. There's danger traveling in terms of accidents and otherwise. You get there, you transact your businesses in cash. There's danger of being robbed and everything. And then you come all the way back to Accra. Now, if we are digitalizing for the use of that person, you can actually transact business sitting still in Accra with your phone. You get all the sample pictures on your phone. You have a trusted person there you're working with. You get your samples. The vehicle goes there. You don't have to be on the vehicle. It's all loaded. It's brought over. You pay, depending on your contractual arrangements, whether you pay before it takes off or you pay after it takes off. You can pay on your phone and you receive your goods. So you eliminate the danger of travel and you eliminate the danger of being robbed or otherwise. And also, it reduces your cost of business because travel costs and all those things are also reduced. At the same time, you are in in situ where you can continue working while this process goes on. That's a local situation. It can be useful for people anywhere from the top to the bottom. Then you have the international situation which is staring us in the face, the African free trade, continental free trade area. Now, if we persist in the way we are now, if I want to buy bush meat from Uganda, Uganda is famous for, or Kenya is famous for all manner of bush meat. I will have to find a flight in Ghana to uh, uh, Kampala. And that means that I may have to fly to Belgium or London or Paris or the, uh, do a connection from Europe. I'll fly from Africa to Europe and uh, do a connection 
to East Africa. Oh, but now you can fly direct to East Africa. <laughs> yeah, you you can... have no idea how difficult this is. Well, I can are. understand, but you <laughs> so, can so... so. So then, my travel cost. When I get there, I negotiate face to face. Huh? And payments have to be made through exchanging different currencies. And in that process, perhaps losing you lose value money. Okay. As I get it. Now I can sit here and do your transfers. Everything. And not have to travel and not have to do anything. And because I'm sitting still and transacting, I also save on the currency exchanges a bit. So there's everything to be said about digitization. But it doesn't exclude where we are and how we can get there. It only demands that we manage ourselves and bring everybody along with us. And of course, there's also structural change. Uh, the vice president talked about Guru Boys and all that. All these public services where people were getting a bit and they assumed it was some sort of employment. As Guru Boys, he goes and he facilitates for you and all that. Now, they can't do that anymore. So that structural change also imposes constraints on how those people who are now out of, in quotes, jobs can also be employed in other areas. But digitization itself is creating new jobs all the time. Okay. So I think it's a very good thing. Okay, let me bring in Honorable Dafi Amako after your, your very lengthy speech. So uh, I've seen that uh, Honorable has written a lot, so prepare good for... <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I must say that I'm happy uh, Yao spoke the way he did on this matter. Um, he did very little propaganda. He tried to give it some historical perspective. Because as a country, as far back as the mid-90s, we initiated processes and policies to, to computerize our, 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 our public processes in public institutions. So today, I, I feel sad that persons like uh, Victor Solomon and Co. had to go to jail for a word of contract for consultancy and computerization of our, our court processes and those things. They were genuine policies. But somehow, we have to find fault with what they did and jail them. Today we are talking digitalization because of policies initiated like that. In 2007 and 8, President Kufo saw, he, he brought some initiatives, especially through SNIT, if you recall. So the, the new SNIT law had to be enacted to create the authority. And he also followed it up with what we call the Ele Electronic Transaction Act. At 772, which was passed on, I think, 19 December 2008. But the implementation of that law was done by the NDC when it came in in January uh, 2009. And that law gave the foundation to a lot of the things that experienced. And I can point to at least five key projects that the NDC government and uh, His Excellency. Professor Mills and John Mahama initiated to anchor the implementation of any other future policy. I recall the, the laying of the over 800, 800 kilometers Eastern Corridor Fiber Optic Cable, which links the, the north to the Accra Data Center, the establishment of the Accra Data Center, the in uh, the, the, the implementation of the e-passport system, where passports could be procured online, the e-justice system. And here and I were practicing in the, the new court complex before the change of our care. And the, and the new court complex was part of the e-justice system that we introduced. And the introduction also didn't start with Bormia. You recall the creation of the Fast Track High Court? Yes. The name Fast Track was coined because the, the, the processes in those special courts became computerized. So it made the processes fast-tracked. That, that was how come this coinage came about. And eventually, 
all the other courts became uh, 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 computerized. Now we have changed from the use of computerization to digitalization. Oh, or what the NDC did was uh, ICT for development. No. It was all part of digitalization, if the technical explanation is being given. But you do them in phases and sectors. We introduce them within the uh, GRA operations to be able to improve tax collection. He read the, the, the cabinet memo to you or the minutes from the cabinet meeting. We introduce them in a, in a lot of our electronic transactions. Indeed, if you look at the Act 772, if we check the Section 2 of the Act, which is the application of the law, it says it applies to to applies to electronic transactions and electronic records of any type. So that is actually the, the, the enactment underpinning all these activities. Electronic transaction and, and data of any kind are anchored under this law. If you go to the interpretation section, all the public institutions that have been mandated to as it were, digitalize their operations, are uncut under this law. So there was nothing new. So if you recall, the NDC did what we call number portability. It was part of this law. So the NPP came and did what they call the number interoperability. The mobile interoperability. interoperability. The mobile interoperability. Mobile money interoperability. Interoperability is yes. to enable you send money across platforms. The yes. The portability enables you to make calls across the platforms. So we are building on. He just recounted an incident. I traveled to I traveled to uh, Holland, Skipo. In Skipo, there are some of the doors, even to the washrooms, <laughs> you have to use your, your how do you call it? The, bar, the QR code. No, or the, no, the, and the QR code is in your, uh, well, let me call you. It's in your, um, um, I, I'll mention it. If, if you are boarding a flight, your boarding pass. pass. You have to actually show your boarding pass to be able to open electronically. Otherwise, you were a stranger. Because the staff working there had their own access key cards. So when you are a traveler, once, once you are checked in and your boarding pass is, passes through this, is scanned, it becomes so precious. And it was very, very interesting that me among multitude of travelers, one, and the instruction is that once you, you flash your, your boarding pass, it opens you, you go and you sort yourself out and come back. This is how digitalized the, the global economy has become. A lot of the duty-free shops, you enter and there's nobody. In fact, in some, with robots now, they'll speak to you, they'll transact with you and go. We don't have human beings <laughs> manning the counters. So if you are not savvy, <laughs> you'll be in distress. So these are the issues. And I'm happy, but... But, the, but it's our system, what we're doing, is it really the holistic digital or these are just short-term fixes because no, no, one they, of the they are not they are not in the sense that, but my worry is the propaganda that all these are happening as a result of the vice president championing it it is not this is these are national policies okay because let me give an example yes. which i think is one i tend to use yes. it has to do with the digital address yes. system yes um one of the uh, one of the things I've noticed is at the time we were doing the national ID card, for instance, the yes. time came where there was the revamp and you have to go and do the registration. If you had not generated your digital address previously and have it stored maybe on your phone or written down, you are now asked for a digital address that maybe you don't have. And we are told of people who generate a digital at address a at a field near a tree, and that has now gone into the system. Even at a fee. They were at charging. a fee. Yes. Okay, some people were generating and giving yes, you. All and, right. And, and, and I mean, how can money. you have a system you can actually rely on in that manner? You can't now, rely on now, you can't rely on a system yes, like now, that. Now, let me 
Let so me make let the him point. and then I'll hear from No, let me make the point. And so that is my point, that the implementation must be met methodical. It must not be haphazard. We are, if you go to South Dine now, they are bringing the digital address uh, uh, signs to label homes of people. You are lucky. I live in Gan East. Nobody okay. has come to okay. label my, my assembly, house. My assembly, the new, the new DC is quite <laughs> proactive. So <laughs> we are about to roll out the signage mm. for the homes. But what we have detected is that we are seeing names and balls on some of these plates that are not from southern so again it brings you to the point because you see what we have what what the vice president somehow imposed on us was already in, in google yes imposed, so, oh, well so, imposed it on us so uh, so with, i was reading bright simmons yes, article it was already in google I where he use, points to what google had and what we claim we had created yes. which it's not a separate interface. It was no creation. Google. It was no creation. We only took advantage. And, and, and I heard them last month or two that Google was now ready to rather on, upload our system onto a system at a fee. I Googled that news, news line and he actually said it. And I found it very strange because you see, I can see my home from here when I go on Google Map, my home. I can actually see and look into my home from the best eye view yes. from Google. And that Google, when you go, you, you see a blue dot. And that blue dot, when you knock on it, it gives you the grid lines, that the longitudes mm -hmm. and the latitudes. Mm -hmm. And those ones can actually generate your, your, your digital address. address. So we, we perhaps simply clone it from them and made it ours by what we call the Asasi app. We, we created what we called the COVID-19 app. What happened to it? I raised this matter in Parliament. They said we didn't spend a special on it, but we spent money. What is the fate of the COVID-19 app? So the vice president may champion these programs as government policy, but the use of a PR code to buy Wache, my dear, doesn't reduce the cost of Wache, which is what the people are concerned about. You, you understand the cost me. of acquiring the rice to cook the wache if you don't have to travel back and forth. You have to travel. Why do you have to travel? You no, so the travel. only the benefit of the digitalization, you are saying, you are the interoperability yes. is that when I go now, I don't need to carry cash. When I meet, go to buy wache, I can pay with my mobile phone. But, but it doesn't reduce, reduce the, the cost of the wache. Yes, but it doesn't reduce the cost. Because How does the it do rice it? and beans that you acquire? If you use electronic means to acquire them, your travel cost. You don't no, the watch it. But you still the, have to the, go the, to the, the place. The watch seller. You're only yeah. going to buy the watch. Yeah, you yeah. don't acquire yeah, the rice and beans. Yeah, yeah. But those things, if they are not cost, yeah. they are not increasing the cost of the watch per day. Then your cost of watch will remain stable. How? That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. When you remain stable. Yeah. When you download, when you download the app, they charge you. MTN charges you, don't they? they so, you so if you want to. Talk, if you want to talk yeah, about works. cost, there's cost to the implementation of the of you the e, e, e platforms. So I'm saying, don't sim don't simplistically say that in trying to, for instance, say e passport will reduce the cost of applying for the passport. It is convenient. Every anything e is a matter of convenience. Filing of court processes using e justice means is only a matter of convenience, but it doesn't reduce the cost of filing. A writ, for instance, depending on the the, the if, if it's an action in liquidated claims, it will reduce the cost of the filing, but it will make you easy. It will make it easier for you to file. But in all this, there are there are there are fundamental issues as to even network stability. We are still struggling. There are there are sections in my constituency. It's not just in fact, and I want to even use this opportunity to mention GIFEC. Yes. All this foundation that had been laid that you talk mm -hmm. about from the from the north mm -hmm. all the way through mm -hmm. the eastern corridor mm -hmm. to Accra. I have had the privilege through the Volta Regional Coordinating Council to travel to Keta mm -hmm. and all the way up. The internet service is it's horrible. Very, very not even simple it, internet. It's, it's, even it's phone disappointing. Call. Even phone call. Sorry? I thought you said you laid the cable to the north. Yes, we did. And so why why is it not 
So it's about implementation. No, no, so no. That, it's so about it's implementation. About implementation. That is why I'm saying that. So when it's we are not seeking, widespread. When we are seeking to, to improve in terms of our transactional, electronic transactional mm -hmm. uh, matters, the, the fundamental issue is with, is with the network stability. So you and see access. that. Yes, you see that you go to a bank, you want to make a transfer, they say the network is down. So ours, the network is down. It is only when the network stabilizes that the transaction, electronic transaction can go through. I've been sitting here trying to transfer money. It took <laughs> some time. No, it took some time. To Momo, because there are funerals I'm supposed to attend. I've not been able to attend. So I have to send Momo. So funeral donations can be done on my behalf as I sit here. You understand? And it took some time. Oh, no, so, but yes. When you are evading arrest, you pay for funerals. <laughs> oh, funerals is part of your duties. It's become part of your social duties to the people. You cannot attend. But they will tell you that. Or three and kwa ni humako. And it's, it's a exact replica in every. Now, when I'm not able to attend, MP is not able to attend. But, but his donation his, should be has announced. attended. Yes. And, and the party executive should be able to do that. So you must motivate them and, 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 and uh, uh, have, uh, support them to be able to attend these funerals on your behalf. Mm. So that's the point. That, uh, could you, in, uh, yeah, in, a lot, in a lot of areas in my constituency, in fact, perfect the capital network is so horrible. There are a lot of areas you can't, they can't make calls at all. They must descend from the mountain to the roadside to be able to have network. So we must begin to improve net, network connectivity and stability of same before these e-systems can work. Yes. Are we going to well, do e-fishing as well? I don't, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think all that you say attracts from the fact that we need to move. I think we, we need to, to move, but are we, we carrying to. everyone yeah. with us, or is we, just a privileged no, few no, who no, are in we, we big always, urban cities? We always have to start Even the from the beginning. Cities, they are, they are, Has everybody they are benefited from network. secondary school education since Kwame Nkrumah's time? But we are still expanding it. Is that not the case? Yes. So, so we are a society. We need to progress. And progress has never been an event. Progress has always been process. It is the willingness to invest in that process and carry people along that matters. Some have, and, challenged, and, and, and some we, have challenged the e-health, mm, the e-education claim. The, you, the hospitals are still using... Everybody is entitled to challenge everything. But it is a fact that haven't you experienced it in a hospital that your records are on having to experience i have it? thank you it, but, so, but so it's people not about, yeah. are experiencing ah. please okay. let me, i'm going to that part of it okay. look if this were not a good thing then dc would not be recounting history about they doing it and the difficulty that's what i call the league table approach to development <laughs> where it is very difficult to find out who began <laughs> and who ended what did he say he said it is kufu's administration which passed the electronic Transactions Act that the NDC implemented. If the Act had not been passed, what would you have implemented? So, is would it have passed it and implemented? It? How did you, the, the thinking and the conceptualization that went behind it at that time to determine that ah, Ghana needed to consolidate and move forward? Because Kufo also came to meet something. He came yes. to meet the uh, 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 the fast track course, mm. the automation. Mm. I mentioned it. So, the e justice system. I remember when Nanado Dangwe Kufuado, His Excellency the President, was Attorney General. The now Minister of Communications was in the, uh, 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 the Justice Ministry and directly in charge of the e-justice project there, supervising it. You, you understand what I'm saying? So these processes are over time. NI, the Ghana card, Kufu started it, left it. The NDC couldn't for eight years. Develop, de deliver it. No, we please, no. Please. We the delivered. NDC. We distributed cards. The, the what you card have done, what my you family. Have done, what I you took have my done. family. I registered. I took my I family to Parliament to register. I had the privilege then because I was in civil society. I worked with Parliament and all that. I took my entire family to register in Parliament. 
up to now, all I have is the paper slips. I still have them at home. But did you go to the NIA office it to collect happened. your card? It never happened. No, I went, no, I followed up and followed up and followed up. The cards never happened. Okay. So, so, so I'm saying that so over the, eight years, that system left to the NEC from Kufo didn't function. It is when we came into authority that we went full blast and functioned. And in going full blast, if you recollect, but the you vice, had to buy new machines and all that. You had to spend more money. Met, the vice president met all the agencies. They had a major stakeholder meeting and said, this is where we are going. And of course, there's a cost to it. There will always be a cost to development. So what I'm saying is that the challenges will be there. There are genuine challenges with the addressing system. Like you're saying, somebody goes and is supposed to take his Ghana card and he generates... Uh, an address right there. But as the system matures, all those things will be exposed and brought out. We can't say that because people have generated addresses at the registration center, we will stop the process. It has to continue. The difference, the difference, Jifa, that the vice president has brought to this process, the difference is that he has brought a view, an overview a holistic approach that connects different aspects ongoing. You understand? So that we are able to engage and integrate. So you have a situation where we now have the Ghana card. And that same Ghana card, you can, as a civil servant, move onto the Ghana card. We can get to the point where you clock in, your productivity can be assessed. Using the Ghana card. Using the Ghana card and all that. Beyond that, your salary is dependent on the Ghana card. Your pension is dependent on the Ghana card. You can access your contributions through Senate and other pension schemes through the Ghana card. Then your taxes, you pay them through the Ghana card. Then you want to uh, acquire uh, a vehicle. You buy your vehicle, your license, through the Ghana card. You want to go to hospital, NHI through the Ghana card. So you get to the point where that single ID system, for those of us who are familiar with uh, uh, international uh, economies, if you go to America, it is your social security number. If you go to the UK, it's virtually your the NIA same. Number. Your NIA number. As soon as you want to even go and borrow a video, uh, 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 nowadays it's not a tape anymore. If you download it from Netflix, it used to be tapes. You want to go and borrow a videotape, they take your NIA number, they check it out, everything is there. They issue you the same day. They issue you the, the you don't need to fill in any forms. Or, they know where to find you. Everything. You understand? So, so we should aspire. Edison. Edison, who created the light bulb, eh, is credited with having uh, 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 made over a thousand experiments and failed before he finally got the light bulb. And even then, it was a byproduct. It wasn't the main thing he was looking for. So, so why, as a society, shouldn't we aspire? And I'm saying that if we aspire, the difference is that if we have a bird's eye view of all that is going on, and we have energy, political energy, driving those processes, then we will get there faster. We will reduce the overall costs of being a Ghanaian, of doing business in Ghana. And so contrary to what you are saying, if you have to have a service where you don't keep going back and forth, even if the actual service cost is not reduced, you have reduced the cost of going back and forth. So to tell me that it doesn't reduce the cost, it's not truly the right way to put it. If I have to apply for my pension, and it's only in Accra, and I'm in Kumasi, and I travel to Accra, and I fill forms, and travel back to Kumasi, and have them signed, and I travel back to Accra to submit the forms and travel back to Kumasi to wait for the forms to be processed. And once in a while, nobody calls me, tells me anything. I travel to Accra to find out the stage I treat my forms at. I travel about five times over six years. Pensioner. I'm here to receive my pension. Traveling back and forth to receive a pension. I may even lose my life in the process. But finally, I get my pension. And it doesn't even cost to cover my travel costs. Now, because I am in one card i submit the card or the details i am processed 
and in 10 days, I can have access to my pension. Mm. So there's a real genuine reduction in cost. In cost, all right. There's a genuine reduction in cost. Okay, let me, so, mm. yeah. So let me just read this message. It says, um, it's an interesting one. It says, uh, from Abdul, it says, the truth is that digitization and digitalization is a national policy that began in the 19." 90s, but the vice president is being credited because he takes a radical approach towards making it work for all Ghanaians to benefit. Yet, Honorable Daphia Mapo, yes, is what is the, the radical approach in the vice well, president? He seems, he seems no, no, to no, have a certain he energy. Said, even you, right? even you, even you, you, you appear, hold on, even you, you appear to be convinced that he's, he's taking a radical no, no, approach. No, no, I was reading the message, yes, <laughs> but but when I said, when I said, <laughs> it's not only the message that's that convinced, said, but, but she has experienced, experienced what is the energy? She has experienced it. Oh. What is the energy? Well, Today is not talking of Ghana inflation. Talk, or, or, or but, you talk but of if infl we inflation. implement this right, right on. Infl yeah. infl okay, infl so let's let's honour that because he, I think he, he was. He has been talking about the fundamental. Why is it that when we were pushing this agenda between 2013 and 2016, he never even spoke about it as an opposition? How are you pushing the agenda? And in what way? Hold did on, speak about? hold on. You we were, hold the agenda on. From hold on. To let, me, let me demonstrate. What about let, 2000? Hold on. 2000 to 2008. But so we you. gave you credit. In so what way did so you give us credit? that was why we built a credit a digital center. That is the infrastructure. Hold on. It is not the way to go. It is the way to go. Okay, the, but the, on the 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 on, it's on me, that the, the, the vice president yeah, is not talking about the the more than 15 times increases in fuel prices since... Uh, January Since this January. year. He's yeah. not talking about the rate of uh, inflation of the city. and the depreciation, the depreciation of, the city. of the city. He's not talking about <laughs> the complaints of public sector workers who receive four and what? Four percent salary increase. Six percent salary increase. Yo, yo, of yo, let me do it. Oh, no. So this is my he should be, so, so the view is that yeah. for someone who pushed solutions for the economy and all that why is he not reporting to us on because the economy? he's the head the of the economic management yeah, let, yeah, let, me, economy. Yeah, let me demonstrate mm -hmm. we build a crowd digital center that's the infrastructure you need mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. we did the normal portability for you that is the infrastructure you need to be able to do the momo interoperability. Yeah, yeah, let me finish. I, I don't yeah, let me finish. This yeah, we, we let you and I <laughs> yeah. oh, hold on. I'll demonstrate. Oh, yeah, that we lost the e the yeah, we the e passport. That's the platform then, you need. And that's yeah. the cable of glow yeah. and all that. We learned the e passport so that please, persons in home can now apply please. for passport without please. traveling to Accra. Please. That was what please. we did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we learned the e justice by building the the e justice program existed from Rollins' time. Oh, the late Rollins. But who is Rollins? But who is Rollins? But who is Rollins? Now you want to decouple Rollins from the Now you want to decouple Rollins from the Anytime Anytime you want to take benefit, you say John. That is fine. But then you are not No, no, no. You take Rollins with everything. I am saying, I am saying that the e justice. We, okay. we look, we pushed it hard let by building the new actually. He on, even referred to it, which is why he yes. said, so, Honorable Salome and Co. were let caught up. Let, so, yes, yow, let me say this, yeah. Let me say this, yeah. Let me say this the introduction of e platforms in our public sector operations didn't start with Baunia. Yeah, but Baunia yeah, has been said. No, that and let me, why so that is the major premise. Yes, let me say that. Let me give you the minor that. premise. No, I that, have that, said that. Let me give no, you the minor uh, premise. Just to correct, the, the vice impression. president said uh, in that speech mm. that this government over the last five years has done more for digitalization and whatever of, than hold, any other hold, government which, since which, independence. On, That's hold, what he said. Hold on. Yes, yes, he said so he let, me yeah, yeah, let me debunk that. Yeah, let me debunk that. Let me debunk that. You, look, debunk look, that. Look, look, you can't which, debunk it. Which because is that infrastructure? Is the that soft infrastructure that is going on yeah, now. Which one? Which, which the only one he introduced, let me mention them. He introduced the COVID-19 app, which has failed. He introduced <laughs> the drones. <laughs> eh? The <laughs> drones, which this, has this failed. Is, this, is a, this is a sterile argument. Oh, how? How is sterile? The birth and deaths. The public services, which, which DGLA, and, yeah. uh, and all those yeah. things, NIA, go, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. go to, and all those yeah. Go to the electronic transactions oh, please, act and please, find out please, what please. data we are supposed oh, to protect. Please, 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 please. So, so, so please. what is this? Okay, okay. so wrapping up for us, NIA. This is below the belt. No, no, it this is, is never below, below the belt. Look, the vice president has lost focus. Accept. How can he have lost focus? How can you have no, as the chairman of the economic management? It team. is your pain that what is happening now is going so well. 
so you want to create so credit? You want to claim work. credit for it? No, no. So when if it were not going well, the NDC will say we are doing bad. No, no. They are, they are saying no, no. We, we are telling the vice president. Whenever the NDC president. says we yeah. did it, it means it's yeah. going well. Yeah, we did it. It means it's going well. We are telling the vice president. Your final point. Honorable Wabi, let him finish. Let me have the final word because we are wrapping out. We are wrapping up. Yes. We are telling the vice president that he should come back home. We will talk the economy. He should leave the digitalization. Please, it's underpinned by digitalization. It's a small part of the Thank economy. You. Thank it's you. A large part of yeah. it. No, it's, it's a, a small part. part. So, can you, by digitalization, Transport tell me how many, how many kilometers of road we have tied? If we begin e procurement. If. Yes, you because see. the e procurement exactly. platform is. So, and yet, this is the a man who says that he has, he has done a lot. But the e procurement platform is. You understand? Right so, now. As so, Jifa. So, 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 Jifa. We have point, so, Jifa, the point is that. So let me come back to NIA. So let, let, let me conclude on NIA. Every single road. NIA will roll out 1.2 million cars. 1.2 million. And where are the cars? 1.2 million. Now we have What you did, let me tell you. Hold on. 1.2 million. Exactly. What you did was that as soon as you took over, as soon as you took over, you it was sat, you, you sat the executive director. Eight years, one point two million. Appointed a new executive Eight years, one point two million. Yeah. Okay, so Take please let him make a point. Appointed a new executive director. Please. And came to parliament that to amend the law. You are listening to me. You are now on the committee. You amended the law. It's going to say that now. It's good for the country. Now, admit you couldn't even rely on Just when you want to register for a national ID card. You couldn't rely yes. on the best line. That's young. You can't you even that rely on that certificate. That was what went to pass. We made you understand? So, so you, so you introduce NDC. changes it in is the a process. registration it process. It is a process. And that process. You introduce changes we into have the registration into process. You derail the process. consolidation. And yeah. there's an overview yeah. you and there's the an process. implementation okay. so that is so driving it. So tell the vice president we should come back to the economy and talk. Now the city is 6.8. And it has oh, is this 6.8? I thought it was 6.2. It's not 6.2. Right. In fact, are you sure? Your your master, the interbank is below 6. No, if you are using so your card, card is okay. so, so I'll have to check that. But I thought it was 6.2. If you are using the your debit card, it's below 6. Check the rate that they are applying. All right. So we have to end now. But thank you very much. And I think that's the main point about dealing with the government. I also want to say thank you to everyone who sent me messages on Twitter. Many thanks to all of you for watching and joining us online. Many yes, thanks really to our yes, guest, really the Honorable right Dafia Makpo, MP for South Dye, Honorable Yaobwabe Asamwa, MPP Communications Director, and Jifa Bampo. On behalf of the entire production team, thank you for watching. Uh, key points up next, of course, is Warm Up Plus.